All right, we're gonna wait for some of the audios to keep connecting and then I will go ahead and get this started. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us um, for our Aspire night. It's Tuesday and um, I'm going to admit a couple more people. Wait for everybody to get in here before I introduce myself. We have a lot of people signed up for this one, so. <laughs> Gonna hear a lot about the fine arts at Carthage and the career options. Okay, a couple more people, hang tight. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So my name is Mallory Madsen. I am a Director of Admissions and Financial Aid at Carthage. Um, I'm also a 2009 graduate. Um, I graduated with a psychology degree, um, so a psychology major and a religion minor. And now I work for the Office of Admissions. Um, I love Carthage. I would do my experience all over again. So I'm excited that you are all here to kind of learn a little bit more about what we have to offer in regards to um, our career services office, which we call our Aspire Center, where you're paired up with a career specialist starting right off your freshman year. Um, and they're going to be with you to kind of walk you through your entire path at Carthage. Um, if I could ask every student who is in this um, Zoom, if you could put your first and last name into the chat feature um, so we can mark your attendance and that way you can ensure that you will receive your $250 um, renewable scholarship um, to Carthage if you decide to attend. Now, what I will say is that this is a one-time scholarship, so it is renewable for the four years, but if you have signed up to attend another, uh, another Aspire Center um, presentation, you will only get the $250 once. So again, for those of you just joining us, please feel free to um, please put your name in the chat feature and I will go ahead and pass it off to my colleague in the Aspire Center. Thank you so much, Mallory. Absolutely. Uh, my name's Carrie and I'm just gonna uh, share my screen here. Um, Okay. Okay. And okay. Can everybody see that? Looks good. Okay, great. Great. Um, so thank you for the uh, for being here and thank you for choosing to be here uh, tonight with Mallory and to learn more about the Aspire Center. Um, I'm really humbled that you've carved out time to participate in tonight's session and I'm looking forward to sharing more about the Aspire program with you uh, and learning more about some of the questions you may still have about the wide variety of opportunities available to you as a student at Carthage. So what is the ASPIRE program exactly? The ASPIRE program is a comprehensive four-year career preparation program for all Carthage students. And you'll develop a dynamic approach to goal setting and life skill building. You will own your own ability to be a lifelong learner and impactful contributor in the world and be able to recover when plans don't go exactly as expected. 
And in full transparency, I think a lot of us are facing a world that tipped us on our sides and threw a bunch of obstacles uh, in our way that were not part of our original plans for the last couple of years. So this um, ability to kind of recalibrate is, is really critical in, in uh, today's world. Uh, but you all know that, right? <laughs> so, uh, but as the world changes and the job market evolves, the Aspire program pairs the unique career readiness tenets of creativity, entrepreneurship, and leadership with a commitment to experiential learning and mentorship to prepare you for success in a meaningful life, no matter what the world looks like after graduation. And it's not just about building a fruitful career. The Aspire program is about understanding how your activities in and outside of work and school can help you to craft um, a satisfying life. All right. Um, can I do that? Okay. And so I'm Ms. Mary Kim, and I'm a specialist for arts and culture, and I work with students, uh, faculty, faculty and staff, and community partners. And so um, I was I had other careers before I came to the Aspire Center. I've been working in the arts for over 20 years. And prior to joining the Aspire team, I was a K-12 art and adaptive art teacher who worked in a public school and is a visiting artist in community spaces, uh, galleries and museums. I served as an arts administrator, a curator, museum and university educator at an academic art museum out of state uh, where I worked with a variety of scholars, artists and musicians to create exhibitions and public programming. And I also developed internships uh, for students in the arts and humanities there. I'm a working artist and an entrepreneur. Um, I'm a consultant for individuals and institutions like different museums and design spaces. Um, I show my work whenever I get the chance. And I say all of this not to toot my own horn, but to share with you the unique perspective that I have in helping to support Carthage students in the arts and humanities. Uh, part of my job responsibilities are to use my personal and professional background and network and extend that to our students in helping them to build their network, your network, <laughs> um, and opportunity as well. And as a career specialist, um, I have the honor of not only helping students build personal and professional life uh, that excites them, but I work closely with Carthage's faculty and staff to ensure programming and campus-wide goals are in alignment with our student interests and needs. And to that end, I also work with local and regional community uh, partners, um, Madison, Milwaukee, uh, Kenosha, Chicago, all over the place um, to build opportunities for our students. Uh, this is different than other institutions that have traditional career services centers and career counselors, because unlike them, uh, we have career specialists that have actually navigated through the fields that we are helping students to navigate. So many unwritten rules of job market actually happen on the job. And we have particularly keen awareness and insight in helping our students with this because we literally know what it's like to be in that business. And we didn't learn about it in a book. <laughs> it's through our experience that we can help you. And uh, I'm not, I'm only one of a handful of career specialists. Um, you'll see, here's uh, Carolyn Serdar. Um, she was a social worker prior to coming here and she teaches college and university classes. Sarah Gorky, um, she is the Director of Career Exploration and Design for Undeclared Students. Um, she was an opera singer, she's a Carthage alum, she's been uh, an arts administrator, she's done many things. Um, and then Haley Perez is um, our uh, specialist for science and pre-health, and she has a chemistry degree. Um, I should say Carolyn's the interim spe uh, career specialist for public service and social impact. And we have a new colleague joining us at the end of the month um, who uh, has a degree in law. 
So we have lots of, lots of experience, right? And together we work hand in hand to help ensure the students are best served. Um, if you were to walk into our office on any given day, you would find at least a few of us collaborating and running ideas and solutions past each other. We believe collectively we have better wisdom than we do individually. We also have other colleagues in the Aspire Center that focus on internships and employers and community development to ensure that we are always developing new opportunities for our students to be placed in internships and jobs, career moves, things like that. Oopsie, sorry about that. Um, but the truth of the matter is uh, the world does continue to evolve and we want to make sure that you are as best prepared as possible to meet that dynamic world with the skill sets necessary. So we have a quick video that highlights some of the essential aspects of what we are keenly aware of. Sorry about that. And I just want to make sure here that I can play this. Can everybody hear that? The response to change, leadership, creativity, and entrepreneurship, the key tenets of career development, which are knowledge of self, industry knowledge, experiential learning, mentoring, and networking. So while we totally want to prepare you for an end goal, we have to understand that success does not happen overnight. Uh, all too often, we get discouraged because that end goal seems too far away and too out of reach. But really, it's not the goal that's necessarily out of reach. It's just that we haven't allowed ourselves to plan in advance the steps we need to take along the way to set ourselves up for that, um, to achieve that ultimate goal. And this is where the Aspire program really comes in. We work with students to focus on how to respond to change by making sure that they are secure in their understanding of their own self-identity. We do this in a variety of ways and with a variety of lenses that you can explore, including leadership, creativity, and entrepreneurship. And to start, we want to ensure that students have a true awareness of who you really are. So often we go through our academic journey all the way up to senior year in high school uh, and just plug in the required classes and don't ever really get the chance to pause and reflect on what we really want to be studying or focusing on. So once we allow students to self-identify their skills, interests, and values through industry-recognized assessments and tools, uh, we have candid conversations with them um, about what this means to their current trajectory and where they feel they'll want to explore more or lean into. And sometimes we get met with clear answers and clear goals. Um, and other times we have students say, I don't know, and guess what? That's okay too. Um, the Aspire program is built to honor every student's journey, uh, no matter where you may be starting. 
And there are a variety of ways that we work with students to help prepare you, uh, including bringing more industry awareness to our students. I especially find with many of my students that have an interest in English, for example, uh, that they aren't exactly sure how that translates into a job. And my job, uh, is to help the students understand just how many industries look for English majors um, that have transferable skills like strong analytical uh, abilities and communication skills. Uh, but many students just simply aren't aware of the myriad of ways their skills translate into the uh, real world. And that's where experiential learning comes in. Experiential learning like uh, internships or job shadowing, uh, volunteering, working in a career field that you're interested in. Um, it can expand career awareness and provide direction to that, to what students see for their future. And it can be anything from a project that they work on with an alum in the field while working in a mentor-mentee situation, a job shadow, internship, and even an on-campus job. And the truth of the matter is that these experiential learning opportunities are not only valuable to students in the short term, but when we factor in the power and importance of networking, uh, we see this as a win-win situation for long-term outcomes uh, as well. And there's a statistic out there that over 80% of jobs are acquired through referrals. So that means the stronger your network can become, the stronger your odds of getting positive employer out outcomes are. Um, so the essentials of the Aspire program, um, all new students are auto-enrolled in the Aspire program. You work with career specialists and academic advisors beginning your first year, and you prepare for the workplace through internships, mentorship, and other experiences. Um, so how do you get involved? Uh, well, the good news is that you don't even have to worry about setting your calendar to enroll because you're automatically enrolled um, when you become a student at Carthage. And not only are you enrolled in the program, you get immediate access to me as your career specialist. And I'm awesome. And so are you. <laughs> um, once you graduate, you're also able to, uh, to can you continue working with us as alumni and still have all the privileges and access to the Aspire program's resources. And I have worked, I would say, with quarter of the of my the people that I help, a, a quarter of them are alumni who some have graduated um, almost 20 years ago, and they are looking to change jobs or change careers. And so it's been really fun to keep connected with them. And it's a great perk, uh, too, as a student. And we joke that we try to make the Aspire program as unavoidable for students as possible. And we do this through a variety of ways, as I mentioned earlier, by working closely with faculty and departments that all share a similar mission in student success. And the picture you see on the screen is a photo from the Aspire conference. And the Aspire Conference is a yearly event for our students, alumni, and the community. And this is a zero cost, high benefit opportunity to develop crucial, crucial skills and connections. And I do wanna pause and make sure that I'm very clear, however, um, in that the Aspire program certainly does not, uh, does help you prepare for the workplace, but it isn't just about work. It truly is a holistic look at building a fulfilling life. Um, this year's Aspire Conference, for example, had programming surrounding mental wellness. Even uh, We even started our conference with professional doodler, Natter Doodle. <laughs> um, yes, and she literally gets paid to doodle. Um, she helped our students talk about finding joy and building community in times of uncertainty. And often when we allow ourselves to have critical conversations and we do it within the framework of a creative release, our bodies are more receptive to those vulnerable and authentic conversations. Here is a shot of, can everyone hear that? Sometimes you need to unload your 
part before you can fill it back up. And so that's kind of the point of this exercise here. you a few things. And when we talk about holistic advising, um, we really want to engage all of your creative self. And um, so we started off, we had candy sushi building, we had giant Legos, as you saw, um, silk screening and splatter painting. And, um, and throughout that, people were making connections with one another um, and with people from the community, the artists in the community that were there. And um, people made meaningful connections. And we had really great deep discussions that all happened centered in creativity. Well, there we go. Um, and so experiential learning. Um, so we encourage all of our students to get involved in a variety of ways, including integrating themselves into the campus culture here at Carthage. Uh, truly based on any interest or goal you may have, there's a student organization for you. Uh, if you don't find one that suits you, we encourage you to create your own. And participating in student organizations on campus not only enhances your sense of belonging here at Carthage, but also helps you to build critical components of personal and professional success, including critical leadership building opportunities, collaboration, global sensitivity, and so much more. Uh, we also provide a wide variety of events on campus that are built for you, including guest speakers um, from industries, master classes with professionals, career development programs like our annual Aspire Conference, and networking opportunities as well. Um, so engagement opportunities. As I mentioned, we do our best to engage our students in custom developed programs. Uh, the picture here is actually a screenshot from a summer series that we called Dinner for Four. Um, this took place during the pandemic. And we realized that when COVID hit and everything shut down, our students were really missing a sense of community. Uh, we were able to join together quartets <laughs> of staff, faculty, alumni, and current students to share a meal together, uh, and though apart, um, find common threads of conversation and unique differences of perspectives. And a particular story that comes to mind about the beauty of this particular event that you see here in this picture um, is that Emma, the student on the lower left, um, was interested in pursuing a career in politics in DC and had been thinking about applying for internships, but didn't really know her way around DC. And Daquan, the alumni you see in the lower right side, had never met Emma before this, uh, but has a whole network in DC and they traded information and he was able to help connect her with some resources in DC to get her on the right track. And this is just one small example of the types of beautiful opportunities that arise when our students take advantage of the connections we, can, we have for them. And so here the Aspire Network, um, a prime example of that breadth of connections we have for our students is the Aspire Network. And the Aspire Network is our alumni connection platform. And we're so proud to offer this through the Aspire program because we want to ensure that all of our students, no matter their background, has equitable access to connections. Uh, because we know that data point 
Um, as I shared earlier, about 80% of all jobs being acquired through simply a referral or who you know, um, we want to help build our students' list of connections. And we have alumni literally all over the world, as you can see by the color indicators in the picture, uh, that have proactively signed up to be part of this Aspire network. We found tremendous success and value in these alumni connections, especially in the arts and culture field that have been so dramatically impacted by the coronavirus. Our students are able to build their networks this way and learn all about the industry's responses to the pandemic through actual firsthand accounts of our alumni in those fields as well. And in addition to connecting with alumni, um, we're linked into other um, networks that build a greater Aspire network. So um, it's really just a, a fabulous resource um, that's unique to Carthage. And But while we are so proud of the expansive network our alumni provide, our students from literally all corners of the world, I'd like to just quickly indicate that the Milwaukee uh, Chicago corridor region is home to more world headquarters per capita than anywhere else in the world, including those you see on the screen and so many more. Jockey, for example, is a very strong partner of ours and employs many interns in a variety of majors at Carthage, including graphic design and communications. And we've had many interns go on to become uh, hired at Jockey in large part because of their successful internships. And it's also just fun um, to hear from the students about their internships at Jockey while they have to come up with creative branding for underwear and undergarments um, and work with professional models uh, for photo shoots. Um, our graduates go on to have wonderfully fulfilling lives, again, in large part due to the opportunities that they were able to have while on campus. It makes such a difference when you engage on campus. Uh, so I just shared a bunch of ways that you can get involved on campus and expand your horizons and find connections and cultivate a life for yourself that inspires you. But all of those opportunities only go as far as you can articulate them and tell your stories to other. And this is where your MAP comes in. So MAP is my Aspire plan. And as a student, you'll be able to use your MAP to meet competencies and achievements and catalog and reflect on the wide variety of ways you are learning and growing. So we encourage people that once you have an act, uh, engaged in an activity or have an experience that you reflect on it. And then those reflections, you can go back and, um, really st start to get a sense of how you feel about what you've done and it can inform your choices moving forward. Um, so how does this work? Students track their experiences through guided activities, events, and reflections to help you develop um, career and life readiness skills and mindset. That's huge. Um, college is a fast and busy time, so it's easy for students to lose track of memorable and impactful moments. We don't want uh, students to start from a blank page when they're applying for their first job. So we're providing a repository for students to identify and track the experiences and connect those experiences to competencies, which is a competency or a skill. Um, and this creates a developmental portfolio for students to capture their best of moments. Uh, developmental portfolios provide a place for students to capture their ideas and organize the piece, uh, pieces of information that might become part of their best of moments. And capturing these important ideas and work samples in a comprehensive guided developmental portfolio um, can help students to understand interests and skills that might not have been visible any other way. It also helps them understand how genuine engagement in their disparate experiences in curricular and co-curricular activities should be viewed as opportunities to build the competencies we have identified as an integral to a Carthage education. In other words, building a developmental portfolio over time, uh, students, 
move from a culture of box ticking to a culture of becoming. And students need space and encouragement to compile their imperfect and semi-unorganized ideas. Um, don't we all, right? <laughs> and a developmental portfolio helps to provide this space. Um, this process helps students to build confidence and see growth over time which can make professional portfolio development less stressful or onerous. And in short, your map will include not only the things you did while at Carthage, but what you learned and how those experiences shaped you. And think about it as like a Fitbit or Apple Watch. It nudges you and gives you a reminder. It helps you take a pause when you need to breathe. And it helps you make progress through your goals. Um, the map is similar for you as a student. Um, we are able to provide nudges and fun incentives as you progress, establish goals, and keep you on your path if you need to recalibrate. And I like to, uh, when I'm talking to students in the arts and humanities, I also like um, to talk about um, a lot of time artists um, have a portfolio of completed artwork or designs. Um, musicians can show, uh, showcase their talents, lots of things like this, but this developmental portfolio is really pretty unique to, to Carthage. And I haven't come across another institution that has anything this robustly designed. Um, so our graduate highlights Molly McQueenie of 20. Um, so Molly's on-campus job was working as a student intern in our Office of Communications, and she worked on real-world projects, including the branding and programs of our Aspire conference last year. The picture on the left, left is of Molly in the center, uh, my colleague Becky on the left, and Sarah Gorky on the right. Um, and Becky and Sarah are co-chairs of the conference and go to and got to work very closely with Molly as she put into print our vision for the conference. Uh, not only did we get to know Molly personally, but I can now speak to Molly's professional skills as well, uh, which has already proven beneficial in helping connect her with opportunities for her future. On the right is an example of a product that Molly produced for an internship she had at Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, it was through that internship that she realized she wanted to truly make a difference uh, with the content she creates and didn't want to go into commercial design, but wanted to stay in the nonprofit sector. So today, Molly works for the Kane County Regional Office of Education as their communications coordinator. Here's another graduate highlight of Kayla Bingen. Um, and Kayla originally graduated Carthage in uh, 2015. And while she was a student, she had an internship with the Kenosha, Kenosha Symphony Orchestra. Uh, during that internship, she decided that she actually wanted to pursue a career in arts management and administration and came back to Carthage to get her master's of music and music theater uh, pedagogy. In 2020, she worked with a fellow alum, Nick Huff, uh, to create a nonprofit called the Kenosha Opera Festival. And Nick and Kayla both presented at last year's Aspire Conference about how they had to become innovative and extra creative in starting a nonprofit during a global pandemic. And it's a joy to see our students learning and growing and becoming professionals and then giving back to our campus with their industry insights and wisdom and supporting resources. Um, so we have career assessments, site visits, career discovery tours, resume and interview coaching, career fairs, online job and internet posting, I'm sorry, intern, internship postings, uh, mentor programs and networking events, and subscriptions to industry leading insider guides. Uh, so in summary, the Aspire program can really be whatever you make of it and take advantage of. Uh, meaning we have so many resources for you, uh, just waiting for you to explore. We want to honor your unique journey and are so eager to get to know you as 
improvement and find ways we can build your professional identity as well. And um, different career assessments that we have, um, a Pathway U um, is something that if you're not really sure what you wanna do or you want help um, to pinpoint what your uh, skill sets are, your interests, um, Pathway U is not a simple skills, abilities, or interests inventory. Instead, it's a platform with a predictive algorithm that works for learners finding their purpose. And the platform guides a learner um, the educational choice, vocation exploration, and employment pathways where they will find the greatest sense of purpose and meaning in their lives. Uh, this in turn improves outcomes all along the way and enables the learner to better map their education journey to get there. Um, and I want to thank you again for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may that may have bubbled to the surface as I went through my presentation. And I would also like you to encourage um, encourage you to jot down my contact information, and feel free to email me with any questions that may arise after our time together here today as well. Um, and let me see here. So please feel free to throw a question if you have one in the chat feature, um, or if you wanted to go ahead and unmute yourself, um, if any of you are brave enough to do that. Um, I know it can be kind of intimidating, but we would absolutely encourage you to do so, um, whether you have questions specifically for Carrie or if you have questions specifically um, for admissions and financial aid. Um, if you did not, if you were on the call earlier and already put your name in the chat feature, thank you. If you have not put your full first and last name in the chat feature, please do so before you leave. Um, otherwise, we'll hang tight to see what kind of questions come through. I, can I mention one, one more thing? So I talked a lot about internships and um, something that when I was in school, I never looked for internships because I always thought of them as unpaid experiences, which some are, um, but some aren't. And through the Aspire Center, we have a generous donor who helps to make um, the unpaid internship a little less <laughs> um, scary by it, uh, providing different uh, stipends. So anything that it would cost, let's say if you had to um, have a certain type of software or something for a design job, um, we would be able to help walk you through how to apply for those funds. So that's something that's also really unique to the Aspire Center. If you have not been to campus before, I definitely would encourage you to come on by. We are completely open. Um, I do see a question. What can I expect from a, um, from a psychology course? So essentially, um, you know, we are a liberal arts art education, so it's a well-rounded education. Um, if you are thinking about majoring in psychology, then you're going to take all different types of classes that's going to combine a full major. Um, but a specific psychology course is going to just go over the basics of how the mind works um, and kind of let you know if that's something you want to dive a little bit deeper into. That's exactly what happened for me. I took a, um, a social science course psychology uh, my sophomore year and I decided that's what I wanted to learn full time so um, you know it's it just depends on what you want to try and get out of it but it's all of our courses are very well rounded and will help help you figure out what path you want to go down that's a good question does anybody else have any questions again please feel free to throw it in the chat feature um, I'm going to go ahead and put my email address in the chat feature as well if anybody wants to uh, reach out with additional questions. I definitely would encourage you to chat with your admissions director um, about your interest in Carthage. We are here to be your biggest advocate. Um, you know, if Carthage is where you want to be, we will help figure out how to make that possible for you. 
Um, if you'd like to be connected with a career specialist, you'd like to be connected with a coach or organization leader um, prior to your experience at Carthage, we can definitely help facilitate that. Um, you know, because our goal is to make the college search process as easy as possible, as it may not be. Um, so anything we can help with, um, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. What kind of internships have theater students gotten? That's a great question. Um, so uh, a few different ones that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, we had one student, uh, I wanna say two years ago, who worked with Disney um, and she did the Disney internship and now she works full-time at Disney. Uh, she's a, a musical theater. Um, we've had internships where uh, students were interested in theater and also working and giving back to the community. So students um, that I've worked with already this summer um, have uh, created um, experiences at the Boys and Girls Club, and that was really rewarding for them. So they basically ran a theater camp this summer. Um, I also connected a theater student um, to a gallery, um, a museum, and she was the MC for the summer music series. Um, so a totally different application of a theater training. Um, I mean, really, there are theater students are all over the place. Um, so uh, yeah, it, and it depends too on what type of internship um, you're looking for and, and what other types of goals you have around that. So if it's in giving back or theater education, we can kind of tailor things oftentimes to um, your interests, which is really exciting to do. Do you have any um, experiences with internships in the film industry, Carrie? So um, again, uh, we just brought a colleague on um, who's a recent graduate from Carthage and she was in the film and video uh, department. And she um, actually, during my interview, I connected her with a filmmaker. <laughs> um, and so she worked with a filmmaker uh, who was working out of Milwaukee, who won for a best documentary series. And then uh, Sarah Gorky connected her with um, a filmmaker who just did an HBO project um, that she heard of through uh, the radio and just reached out to her and connected. Um, and so this particular um, student at the time was really interested in giving back and creating a narrative. So she um, decided that she wanted to film um, the theater camps and all the things that were happening at the Boys and Girls Club. So she kind of made her own um, um, internship that way. And then we connected her with mentors to um, work on other projects as well. That's great. The nice thing is we have alumni all over the globe, really. So um, it makes it really nice where you don't necessarily have to stay in the Wisconsin area. You don't have mm -hmm. to stay in the Chicago or Milwaukee area. Um, you know, we can really broaden our horizons when it comes to different internship opportunities, but also obviously that step after um, college. So another question, um, what is a typical day like and would it be difficult to double major in the arts? Um, so I can kind of start off on this one. So, you know, college is definitely very different than high school where you're probably only going to have two, maybe three classes per day. Um, you may have class eight to nine. 10 to 11, and then two to three. So you have different breaks throughout the day, which means that you'll have to figure out how to prioritize your time, but it also gives you a little bit of free time so you can get involved in clubs and organizations. The average Carthage student is definitely involved in three to four things. So whether you're an athlete and you're in the Greek system and you're also a tour guide, or let's say you volunteer at the Humane Society, um, you are in the theater and then you're on the basketball team. That's kind of your average Carthage student. So it's a really unique dynamic. Um, it is also fairly common to double major at Carthage because we are a well-rounded liberal arts institution. So you are gonna be required to take classes outside of your major. With that, those classes outside of your major can filter in an additional major. So I don't know, Carrie, if you have additional um, info on, you know, 
the difficulty in the arts specifically, but it is definitely very common for a double major in general. Yeah, and I, I just would piggyback and agree with what you're saying. A lot of my students, I'd say at least a third of them have either a double major or double minor plus a major thinking about adding a, <laughs> another major. Um, and so, you know, that's a, another place where um, those working through the Aspire Center to really kind of pinpoint what your values and interests and skill sets are, um, that it can sometimes help inform what those other supporting um, either major or minors um, might look like to help you um, move forward with that. Can you double major in different departments? Absolutely. So that's actually the most common. Um, you'll see people who are nursing majors and Spanish majors. You'll see um, whether it's a theater major and then they're adding on a communications with it. So um, it gives you a lot of flexibility again to kind of look at two paths. Um, Carrie, do you have any students off the top of your head who are double majoring and what, what those are? I know I'm putting you on the spot right now, but. In, you mean double majoring into arts careers? Or two different, any two I guess totally I different. Yeah. So um, I had a student come last week that is interested in um, criminology and uh, and um, Spanish, uh, and then she also was interested in in the arts as well. So she wasn't sure between dance and uh, theater. Um, so you know she had very wide interests. Um, and we were able to kind of make that work um, in looking at her interests and skill sets because also thinking about a major, there are so many different applications uh, for each major that um, oftentimes we think of like one career choice, but uh, I think the beauty of a liberal arts um, uh, education is that you can apply it in so many different ways, right? So. Absolutely. And the nice thing is we're not going to require that you declare a major right off the bat because we understand that your mind may change. So utilizing the Aspire Center to kind of help narrow down that path is very beneficial. So the fact that you're automatically paired up with somebody your freshman year, they can kind of help, you know, again, guide you as to which specific path you want to go down or two specific paths you'd like to kind of kind of narrow down. Um, Another question, I'm considering majoring in voice, but I'm not interested in teaching as a career. What are some other possible options for me that involve music or voice? Okay. Um, that's a great question. And a few that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, uh, one of our, one of my, my colleague uh, majored in voice pedagogy and she um, went into arts administration and toured um, as a singer um, all over the world. And so she would sing, perform at different venues um, and then came back and worked um, locally uh, to help bring others on board. Um, I know that some of the students are now doing some voiceover work that involves singing as well. Um, performing, uh, those are the things that I'm most aware of. Um, and I joined this summer, so I'm still learning all of the different applications. Um, and if you're really interested in having that conversation, I'd be more than happy to set something up with my colleague who uh, majored in voice at Carthage and she can talk more to you, more about her experience with you. Um, yeah, there, there are people doing all sorts of things, honestly, so. That's my biggest suggestion that if, um you know, you have something specific that you are looking to gain out of your college experience, you know, definitely reach out to either one of us. Again, if you have a contact at Carthage, um, we want to help connect you with as many people as possible. Um, and that's before you're a student. So that way you're set up when you, when you are an official student. So anything that's gonna help um, make your college decision, uh, you know, don't hesitate to, to let us know how we can help with that. Are there any additional questions that somebody wants to throw in the chat feature or go ahead and unmute yourselves? 
give it another minute or so, and then we will wish everybody a good night. Either way, I thank everybody for joining us. Um, again, you will receive a $250 scholarship on your um, financial aid award letter. It's a renewable scholarship for the four years, um, but it is a one-time scholarship. So I do encourage you to sign up for any additional Aspire events that you want to attend. Just note that it's just the one $250 scholarship. But either way, there's a lot of other um, scholarship opportunities out there. If you are not aware of them, please contact your admissions director so we can help guide you down that path. Carrie, is there anything else you wanna add before we wrap up? I just, number one, really appreciate the questions and appreciate your time tonight. I know you guys are busy um, with other things. So I really, really do appreciate having the chance to speak with you and connect with you like this. And I really do hope that if you have any questions, as Mallory said, that you don't hesitate to reach out. It's what we're here for. And we just, we want you at Carthage. So come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, if um, anybody has a question that maybe they just want to ask Carrie and I or in front of a smaller group, um, feel free to stick around. Otherwise, thank you all for joining us and um, hopefully we'll see you on campus soon. <laughs>So polite. I know. Okay. Does that anybody still on have any questions they'd like to ask Carrie or I? Courtney, did you have anything for Carrie or I? No pressure. <laughs> okay. Yes, that. That's thank it. you, and thank you for. You did awesome. That was fantastic. You did amazing. Uh, not really, but <laughs> why you're in your role. So you did a fantastic job. You're very job. sweet. You're very and thank sweet. you for putting me at ease beforehand and answering oh, my question. Oh, good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you did really well. Um, very well-rounded presentation. You know, everybody stayed on the whole time. That's always a good indicator, right? Um, on how things go when you see the numbers like start at 50 and all of a sudden you're at like 32. Yeah. That didn't happen. So that's good. That's good. Um, and thank now you. You got your first that. one. First one Yay. out of the way, right? Yes, it's only up from here, right? Um, and uh, thanks again for letting us do this this week. It's really, it's wonderful. I appreciate it's, it. Absolutely, it's good for you guys. It's good for us. Um, you know, and like I said in um, in the Zoom, you know, it's we want to get these students interacted with people other than just us. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that so many are signing up for multiple events. And so we had, like I said, we had 40, we have 34 sign up, but we had about 10 that just showed up like That's 10 amazing. additional. So, um, you know, they must've maybe gone on yesterday's and then kept the link and jumped on today. So, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's great news. Um, nice. Well, I hope you and your little one have a good night. <laughs> I loved it. Everybody appreciated it. Ashley texted me and she goes, don't forget to hit record. And I was like, don't worry. I hit record right as Connor was given a nice thumbs up. <laughs> That's Whatever. great.
Oh, fun. I love it. Oh, well, thank you, Carrie. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.